Hello, Jürgen. Good afternoon. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Hello, Fraser. Are you well? Okay, interesting question. <laughs> I'm just checking okay, to see I how you are. I obviously don't look like. Thank you very much. I just, I just I'm like to make sure you're okay. As bad as I look, so let me say like this. <laughs> um, interesting day yesterday, obviously. Um, let's start with the um, transfers that you brought in. First of all, Ben Davis. Um, tell us about the, the, the process of, of bringing him in and why you thought uh, particularly he was the right sort of player for Liverpool. Oh, it's very interesting. Very interesting signing. Um, really looking forward to, 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 to meet Ben finally, because it was it went all pretty quick and, and these kind of things. But you can imagine that in the last few weeks and days, um, we had um, it always to consider our, our situation and to think what, what, what can we do, what do we have to do, stuff like this. And then um, so we were always looking all over um, in each league, pretty much in, in Europe. And when I saw Ben, um, it was really interesting. It's obviously it's a place for Preston Championship um, gives him, um, makes him, shows that he's a very competitive um, player. So he knows um, how it is to play a lot of games and don't train a lot, play more than you train pretty much. Um, we watched him in different games, obviously, and then you saw he's a really good footballer and um, is uh, um, a smart, a smart football player and. and um, player who knows how to defend and when you I was my I was a second division player myself um, and what we all dreamt of was playing in the first league pretty much and um, I'm pretty sure well I know Ben did that as well and so now it's a big opportunity for both sides so for us getting a player who has experience but still a lot of space um, for development and um, and for him obviously um, being involved in a, in a really, really good football team. Not to say that Press was not a good football team, but I think um, I don't say too much if he said it was slightly better. And so that means now for him, and I always, I'm a re big believer in opportunities and, and taking chances. And um, Ben sees it the same way. And so I'm really happy to have him around and to work together with him. Ozon Quebec um, obviously comes with the um, uh, the recommendation of, of David Wagner as well, I understand. Um, we understand he's, he's he's got something of a, a reputation from him for maybe being a bit of a hothead. Um, is his temperament a concern at all? No, and I, I have maybe to clarify that he's not here because David Wagner was his coach and Dave is my friend. Not at all. So when Dave was at Schalke and he's not there anymore, and we spoke obviously a lot about football. How we always do. We are both coaches, so we speak about football. And when he spoke about um, Osani, was always very very positive, um, and. Now, in the last few weeks, uh, days or whatever, we didn't speak really um, it, because it was not necessary. I, it, everybody knows everything about Oza. So um, Oza is 20 years old, plays already the third or fourth season in, in, in adult professional football um, and had really tough times with his team. So that's how it is in football. You as a, a single player cannot make the difference. It's um, just it looks from outside always like this. So but he was um, even in the season when Stuttgart um, got relegated, he, he was he played a really good seasons. Things like these are possible. They are just not seen from from the outside world too often. But when you are in football, you know that. Um, that's the reason why Schalke signed him. And Schalke has a lot of problems at the moment in Germany, in German football, and nothing to do with Ozan. Uh, but then as a young player, you are again in this situation. So what we, we but he never lost the quality, of course not. And he's still a talent, but proved already a lot of things. And now, we saw, we, we see the team when he comes here in a, in a real stable team. I was doing a lot of things um, really good um, that it would help him and he can help then us. So that's the, the reason. And obviously our situation is really strange that you, we, in the moment we are without our first four center half choices, which is really strange. And only one of them will come back with Fabinho and he's actually a six <laughs> um, in the next week or so. Um, on, and so that's the that's the situation. And so we needed we needed players because obviously we could play very well. Um, when was it? The other day against um, West Ham and Tottenham in the second half when Nate and and and, um, and Handel played together. But our problem is always now since already since months. If one more thing happens, then we don't know really what to do. And it's really then, it, then we start struggling. And the solutions we found so far, they were good. 
but now we have again more options and it's not perfect that's uh, the, the, the you know that the channel transfer window is not my favorite window because we we, we we signed the players yesterday and play tomorrow night we will see if they are available or not that's not a problem but then we play three days later again so it means in a very in a in a position where where um team um patterns are really important that everyone knows what he's doing players come now in you so um but i'm really looking forward to it because now it's work under time pressure that's how it is we have solutions actually here and we have now more options um in the team i'm really happy for it and for both players it's a big chance and for us as well and that's uh, that's uh, what i really like about the situation and the uh, injury you mentioned uh, joel matip uh, that must be a real disappointment for everybody <laughs> it's uh, I have not the right words for it. Um, the things that happen now uh, to the boys is incredible, and now the, the, the latest one with Joel is, is really, really, is a big, big blow for all of us um, because you don't not only lose a player for months, you lose a, a, um, on the pitch. I mean, you, you lose as well the, the person in the dressing room for a while because there is, their surgery is probably necessary and were necessary so far. And then they're out for a while and you are not that close in contact. So all these things, you, you don't need that in a, in a moment in the, when the world is anyway not in the best place. Um, and then having these kind of things is really is really harsh. And um, it's really unlucky in that situation when you saw it, when with this this challenge with um, Son was a really good challenge and he played on, unbelievable. After the game, when he came in half time, we, we all thought it's a little bit. And then you said, yeah, I, I will try it. Everyone would try to strap him. And while we were strapping him, the ankle blew up. So um was no chance then, obviously. Um, and so it's absolutely not not good nothing good to say about it the only thing is we have kind of a time frame and um he will be back for pre-season and that's that's great then and then he had enough time that all the things then finally could settle and had enough time to work on the on the specific things with which will make which will make him even stronger for the future then terrific okay simon crabtree and then we go to um ian kennedy but simon first Thanks, Jürgen. And just a, a probably a, a brief injury update on everybody else, if I may. And just as far as uh, Ben and uh, Ozan and Kabak are concerned, how quickly can they be assimilated in, into your first team? Because obviously neither have Premier League experience, as, as you've said. So uh, that's the story, really. Yeah, but the good thing is it's football still. And I played in Germany football, I played in championship football. Um, so that's now not the problem. But how I said, um, coming in a defense, a lot of so twelve or thirteen different center center half pairings, um, and that obviously then when you when you have ten two and then you um, that makes it more difficult for for example for for, for Nico and and Costas as well because Costas is new, Nico is still young, um, these kind of things, and you you be search for kind of stability uh, in a in the team, and um, when you change that often, but. That's we are obviously don't live in an idle world, and that means we have to we have to um, yeah we have to be smart, we have to be quick, and uh, we try everything to do that. There are different things we can do and help them, and, and that it goes faster. But we play obviously different to Preston, and obviously different to Schalke. That's clear. So we will we'll need, need time, but we don't have a lot of time, so we will use the time we have in our hands and um, try our best. But, so. Um, if they would have to start tomorrow night together, I think that would be not too cool, but um, we will give them a few more days. And just before I ask you about Brighton, sorry, just the second part of that in terms of just general with your injuries, how's everybody else looking of, of coming back? Is it as it was? Yeah, it's as it was. OK. Um, so as far as Brighton are concerned, they seem to be back on track just now, don't they, after that, that sticky patch without a win in the Premier League and then to in the last three, the last one against Spurs, probably hitting form just at the wrong time as far as you're concerned. But is it the sort of football that you like to watch as well? Yeah, it is. I cannot. Um, I have not enough words to, 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 to say how, how much I respect what Graham is doing there. And I, and I don't understand it. That's Premier League, unbelievable. The, the way they play is really good and it's unbelievable. So they have a clear idea, stuff like it's good players in the right positions. Um, in the end, they lose games anyway. <laughs> um, but you see, with the points they have, that makes it really strange. But um, they stick to their to their um, idea, and um, I respect that a lot. And now against Tottenham, obviously, it paid completely off. It was a deserved 
well deserved three points. Obviously, they could have scored uh, already earlier in that game and controlled it then in the right moment. So they're just a football playing side. You don't see. I think it's probably fair to say that Brighton fights for staying in the league. So with the points they have, but it's really nice that, you, that they show you can fight for staying in the league with this kind of football as well. So I am very often, not only because Adam Lallana is there now, but um, I, I try to see them as often as I can. Um, and I really, I know how good they are. And it's, it, will be, it will be a tough one. Yeah? So it's, um, they defend well and they, they attack especially um, well. And um, so we have to be ready for, for this game. So and it, is it the right moment? I don't know for us. It feels rather like a good moment that Brighton is in a good moment now as well. I have no problem with that um, in the end. You have to beat the team you face, and that's what we try. Right. Okay, we'll go to Ian Kennedy from the BBC, and then we'll go to James from Talksport. Ian. Hi, Jurgen. Um, we've talked a bit about the um, defensive cover that you've now got. You've obviously got, always had more options further up the park. Did, did, did that make it easier to to allow uh, Takumi Minamino to, to go down to Southampton because you've got more options in those oh, wow. areas? Yeah, of course, having options makes it... The only the only chance that you, that you can give a player to another club, but we were we were active in this situation a little not not active to ourselves and ask him it was not that we said no 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 chance, so we had thought about it and and Chakumi is incredibly an incredible good player, um, and we didn't give him enough chances that's the truth, that's for different reasons um, you know, always sometimes it was just the size because of our problems in defense we were not tall enough and then takumi on the pitch and i think okay how can we do that then defending set pieces is a very important part of it. sometimes it's not for the player not too interesting for journalists probably not too interesting but it's it's in some moments these even these kind of things make the difference why one player is playing on the other not so and now when southampton came up and there were not a lot of clubs where where i thought it makes really sense to 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 let him go but southampton makes a lot of sense so he's there for 17 games now i think Maybe yeah, 17, I think. In a situation Southampton is, I think if, if Takumi stays fit, he will can, has a good chance to play 17 games, which helps then everybody helps Southampton and helps us. Because um, the only thing Takumi was lacking was um, a, a couple of games in a row. And um, that was difficult here. And I would, I would have loved to keep him just to have the option, stuff like this. But in the end, because Takumi is a long term project, always was. Um, we, we, we see a, really a lot of potential in, in Takumi. Uh, it makes absolute sense that he gets now a chance to play maybe 17 games, family games, and um, and then uh, comes back in a completely different mindset, confidence level, all these kind of things. And so it's a, I hope it's a win-win situation. And having brought the two centre backs in, uh, Jurgen, we, we've seen how well that the players like Nat and and Reese have done when they've come in. Do you have to, as a manager, kind of reassure them that they are still very much part of the, you know, the ongoing squad and they can still play a part this season and beyond? Yeah, I, I'm not sure if, if they think exactly like that. So for Reese, for example, it's different. So for Reese, it's Reese played super games for us. People forget immediately these kind of things, but we won with Reese in the, in the, as a centre half. We won at um, uh, Bergamo, for example, from him played a really good game. Reese played in the home game against Tottenham. We won that game. We played a really good game. So they were really, really, really good games for both. And of course, they have they have a future here. Of course, they have a future. But we. The, the, for Reese, the problem is he didn't play often enough now to get kind of rhythm. So he needs to play football in his age. So it makes no sense to, to either play a few minutes or then sit on the bench for two, three games. So we can give him now the opportunity again to to um, to play football and, and, and improve and all these kind of things. So that's good. And and the rest is, is an open race, if you want. So um, and uh, the players who are here are actually a little bit in the, have an advantage that they know what we are doing, but the new players come in and I know they are full of um, um, ambitions and want, want to start immediately. And that's all good. So that helps us keep it going. The last few weeks, it was always the last two men standing place and a half, pretty much. Um, and the rest, uh, we build a team around that. So and now we have more options and now we can watch training and we have the training week. We have after City a full training week, which helps massively. Um, and so we make then decisions like we always do usually in a, in a football season, but we couldn't do in the last few weeks. And now we can do that again. So how is that? Nate and, and, uh, and Tando worked that looked really good. 
Fabinho is not too far away, so he can play the position, obviously, but we have now options again. And with all the games coming up, uh, that was the thing we had to make sure that we have these options. And then it's always about the players to work for a chance, to use the chance. That's all it is. Okay, James from Talksport, and then Carl Markham on the associated games. Jürgen, what is it that you've seen in Ozan and Ben that makes you think that they can make an immediate impact this season for you? Sorry, James, but I thought I answered the question already. I said, I said, it might have been the first question, huh? Or am I dreaming and thought all that stuff? Possibly as well. I said it already. They, they both both have experience on us on on their on their level. They played a lot of games in adult football. Um, yes, Ozan is pretty young, but that's um, makes it really special because he had this experience, and 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 with with David, uh, with uh, Ben, it's the same and um, slightly older different pathway but i like that that's football that's it's not you don't need to um watch a hollywood movie to to see these kind of stories in football it's possible as well yesterday preston today at liverpool so that's a nice story already and um uh, now I, I really i can't wait to start working with the boys because again i'm i'm a big um fan of of chances and, and giving opportunities and, and, and giving chances and so and this is an absolute chance for, for the club, for us as a team and for the boys as well. And that's great. Now let's go for it. And whatever they did so far was good enough that we wanted to have them. From now on, we expect more. Easy as that. That's how it is. Because together with us, each single player has to make the team better. That's how we always saw it. That's how we always did it. And that helps the team. And the team helps then the players to flourish. And um, that's exactly what we expect with the two boys as well. OK, now we'll go to Neil Jones and then we'll finish with Hideo. Neil. Hey, Jürgen, you OK? Hello. Uh, I wanted to ask about Thiago. You've, you've had obviously a month, a month of him fit and available and getting a run of games. And how pleased have you been with the way he's he settled in and, and the impact he's made in the side? Good, good, good. Really good. Of course, we, we, we was far from being perfect, the situation. So with him coming in, being injured pretty early and stuff like this, that's all not, not really good, but um, not too important anymore. And then coming in and we, um, we, had to, we had to learn. He had to learn how do we play. We had to learn how he is playing without changing everything. You're not giving Thiago. So you buy Thiago Alcantara from Bayern and tell him, OK, nice. But for now, you do this different, this different, this different. So it's, it's a job, and then usually you need time for that, that it settles, that the things find together um, kind of naturally without changing too much, just making it better by using the different skill sets. Um, yeah, and it was absolutely okay, but then uh, we thought it helps because think again, what did he do at Bayern, which role did he play there? Yes, it was six, but it was more a double six and these kind of things. And so we decided to 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 adapt his position a little bit. It worked out pretty well. It gives us stability, gives him stability. Uh, we can use his football skills, which are obviously outstanding. And um, yeah, no, really good. Okay. Now we'll go to Carl Mark. I'm sorry to forgot, and then we'll go to uh, Hideo Carl. Hey, Jürgen. Hi, Carl. Just, just a quick one from me. Um, I was wondering, are you planning to add Virgil van Dijk to your updated Premier League squad this week, which has to be submitted? I think he was in the I think he was in the Premier League squad always. Of course, he played Premier League. He was in the Champions so League. I thought, I thought you took him out when he got injured because he had to submit it because it was late to submission. Possible, Carl. We'll have, I'll come back to you on that, Carl, because that's admin. That will be done in the next twenty-four hours, I think, uh, or in the next few hours. After so, okay. Look, whatever happens, I think I think we have space for Virgil on the Champions League list. I think he was on the Premier League list. At the, uh, so uh, nobody told me that I have to change something um, with that. Um, if Virgil, if we have space in the Champions League list, then Virgil will be on the list. That's how it is. I think he's on the but, Champions League list, not on the Premier League list. So in the moment, it's not. It's not like uh, I don't know where these things are coming from. Nobody really. Um, no, no doctor, nobody really told me there's a chance for, for Virgil to, to, to play in this season again. I don't want to say that's absolutely impossible, but it's not likely. It's not likely. So, um, and and that's, we don't have to discuss these things really. So as I said, if you have space, we will put them all on. Um, even when, the, when, the, when all the medical people tell us there's no chance, so we put them on because we believe in miracles from time to time. Um, but 
if there's no place, then we have to we have to consider these kind of things and say, oh, the chances are not too big, so we have to make a decision. Um, but if they are on the on the on the list, uh, then it's only because we hope for uh, nearly a miracle. That's it. Okay. And then we'll finish with uh, Hedio. Hmm. Are you again? Yes. Hi. Are you interested? I see you probably for the last time for 17 games, eh? <laughs> you move well, now to South yeah. Africa. Just to follow up uh, on your comments on Minamino, uh, just what went wrong for him in the past month or so? Because looking out from you know from the outside, it looked like he suddenly lost his place and you know went down the pecking order. Uh, and also, what he needs to do at Southampton to you know get back into the Liverpool team next season. He just has to enjoy football again there. So that's what he, he did. He, he's, a, he, he's an outstanding professional, <laughs> and a really a top talent, really, really, really good player. So it's all good. Um, but then we have a really good squad. I mean, we struggled a lot, but never in the offensive part, and not, not really in the offensive part of the pitch. And then um, you need to, my job is to to make decisions on, on the base on what I imagine what could be the outcome in the game. And uh, so, for example, the, the, the people who were fighting with him for the place were, were in really good shape. Shakiri, when he came back, was showed up in, uh, extremely. Then with, with Divock, and we all know what Divock did for us in the past. But then from time, sometimes it's it's just the size which makes it, how I said before, it, it can make a difference. Uh, and these are kind of things. And so it, it worked not often enough out for Taki that he could start a game or come on. And that's 100% my fault as well, as well. But I think we we both think now, Taki and I, we think both that we can sort that by playing him 17 times if possible in the Premier League, and then he can he doesn't have to change anything, he doesn't have to improve in anything. He just have to 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 play football and to to gain rhythm and confidence in that moment, and then it will be fine. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you.